you're going to do it big, you got to get out. You can't sit home. If you're sick as a dog, you say, darling, I got to make it. Even if you vote and then pass away, it's worth it, remember? <laughs> oh. They, they, they never heard this, apparently. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah. He, the only thing missing on him is the, is the thing. This is sash. <laughs> yes. He's got the caucus hat I on, mean, the caca hat caucus on, whatever captain. it's called. Yeah. Well, you know who was his usual compassion itself ahead of yesterday's Iowa caucus, but voters answered his call and joining us now to break down yesterday's results. Please welcome back the amazing ABC News chief, Washington correspondent and author of the book, Tired of Winning, Jonathan Carr. Welcome back, Jonathan. Thank you. So, Joy has I have the first question. question. So you just heard that. Yeah. I mean, he's basically uh, asking uh, voters to show up in sub-zero temperatures um, uh, at the risk of life and limb, and that really paid off for him. <laughs> I mean, uh, this race was over just minutes into. I watched it last night. It, right into, like, in five minutes, they decided he was the winner. How did that work, and does it get any more definitive than that? And what are your biggest takeaways? By the way, it was in, uh, in Iowa that he had that famous quote, they would support me even if I shot, shot somebody on Fifth yeah. Avenue. Yeah. So, oh, I didn't so there's like a long, that yes, that was in do, Iowa do in 2016. Do you think that they think he's kidding or something? Um, uh, I, I, or are they I, just I, that you know, uh, who knows? But, <laughs> but, but look, the, the biggest takeaway, this is Donald Trump's party. And I know it's one state has voted. It was only 110,000 voters. Uh, it was actually historically low turnout in Iowa. But he dominated, and this was almost a perfect result for Donald Trump, because not only did he win with more than 50% of the vote, but his opposition is perfectly divided. Mm -hmm. So both DeSantis and Haley have a reason to stay in the race. Look, between the two of them, you had 40% saying that they wanted somebody besides Donald Trump. Yeah. But they're perfectly divided between the two of them. And look at how they've campaigned. They've beaten the crap out of each other, and they've focused very little of their fire on Donald that Trump. That may change. Well, yeah, that started, it started to change a little bit yeah, uh, yeah, in the last yeah. few days. And, and that was my, my question, because as we know, yeah. almost half of the people showed up wanted someone other than Trump last night. But what do Nikki and DeSantis have to do at this point to break through and for one of them to come ahead? And do you think there's any regret that neither took the front runner on more directly? Uh, I, I think there absolutely, if there isn't regret, there needs to be regret. But, <laughs> but look, it is important. It, it is not over. And I want to say that again. It is not over. <laughs> one vote, one, one state, one small state, low turnout. That said, what, ha what has to happen? I really think we're at the point where Trump is dominant everywhere else in the country, at least in polling, mm -hmm. more dominant in most places than he was in Iowa. Yeah. Uh, with the exception of New Hampshire, where, of course, independents are a big factor. Independents can vote. Nikki Haley could pull off an upset win in New Hampshire. She really has to yeah, if she's going to win. But I think the only way Donald Trump loses this nomination at this point is if he loses. I don't know that either one of them have demonstrated the ability to really take him out. Yeah. Uh, but there's got to be a lot of regret, because remember, a year ago, uh, DeSantis looked like he could actually beat Trump. There were polls yeah. that showed DeSantis beating Trump, yeah. and they spent month after month after month dancing around and not saying anything critical of the great one. And fighting each other. And, yes. and he spent yeah. all that time destroying his own state to get to that point, and look what happened to him. Yeah. DeSantis? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, DeSantis is, uh, you know, one of, I mean, Nikki Haley's got a big problem in South Carolina. DeSantis has a big problem in Florida. Florida. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Trump dominates both of those states. Well, and I know we're talking low turnouts and, and giving some context to what these numbers yeah. actually mean and how accurate they are in predicting candidates, but entrance polls did show some stunning things among this voting block. Two-thirds of Iowa caucus goers still believe the so-called big lie that Biden did not legitimately win in 2020. So that's shocking to me that people are still believing that to the numbers they are. But what else stuck out to you from those polls and how much stock can we take in it considering the context of the numbers? Well, I think the polls are incredibly accurate in terms of Iowa caucus goers. Uh, the, the result that those polls predicted almost exactly mirrored the final result. Uh, in terms of larger audience, I think, unfortunately, th 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 there is a lot of accuracy, especially on that question of what uh, has become to be known as the big lie, the idea that somehow the 2020 election was stolen. That has taken root. That is Donald Trump's lie. Mm. There is no evidence for it. And not only is there no evidence for it, and this is a really, really important point. Uh, we have now have had a January 6th committee. Yeah. We have had uh, a special uh, prosecutor, uh, Jack Smith, who have brought in and testified, have, 
have brought in to testify under oath Trump's top advisors from his campaign, his campaign manager, his campaign lawyers, his campaign advisors uh, in the White House, the, the, the White House lawyers, uh, mm -hmm. his former attorney general, Bill Barr, his mm -hmm. good buddy, Dan Scavino, who is still on the campaign. They have all testified under oath that they saw no evidence that the election was stolen. And yet, Trump continues to say it, and two thirds of Iowa voters. Kool Aid. It. Kool Aid. I mean, it's it's it, it's astounding because it, 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 it is it is the most thoroughly disproven. No, thing. Do you think no, Fox no, plays into this the other all the other lie. That... The other lie. Yeah. We know that he's good at this because this is what he did to Barack Obama. That's right. Yeah. He Bertha. pushed that the lie. Yeah. Say it over and, and, over, and, over, and over, over and over and over and over, and then people start going, "Well, if he wouldn't be saying it if it wasn't so." He actually would be. Yeah. And Goebbels, thing, it wasn't so. Can we yeah. say Goebbels? The other thing, John, uh, <laughs> that's interesting is that those people also testified that he knew it wasn't true. And yes. that doesn't even and matter. And Scavino was on stage okay? with him last That doesn't night. even matter to people. Let me ask you this, though. Trump famously said he loves the poorly educated. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, those people, those people that are um, less educated voters, see him as one of them even though he went to an Ivy League college. Right. Um, he yeah. did bet, and in fact, what was interesting is he not only had a great night with less educated voters, he had a great night with the evangelical voters, he even did better than expected with college educated voters. What does all of this say to you about not only the MAGA base, but the Republican base? Well, well look, it, it has become a more blue collar uh, working class party, uh, and and frankly, his his support has gone across all those demographic groups, and he has of course done better among uh, Hispanics and African Americans than Mitt Romney did uh, in, in in 2012. So he he has a a broad dominant coalition of Republican voters, and he has brought new people into the party. Um, but but let's forget, let's not forget, we're talking about among Republicans here. Yes. We're talking among Republicans. He still has huge problems when you get to a general election and he has to actually win over independents. And well, you know, yeah. we keep talking and trying to understand what makes these people vote for him. With yep. The guy has, we know, 91 indictments. He hasn't won a race since 2016. He's liable for uh, rape. Yep. Um, he says he wants to be a dictator on day one. He makes fun of uh, Gold Star or uh, families. He makes fun of John McCain, who was a hero in Vietnam. And yet they still love him. But the main thing I see is he's a loser. He keeps losing. So why do they keep throwing their weight behind a loser? And now Chris Cross Christie told us that he is sure that Trump would lose in the general. Should he have that kind of confidence when these people are putting themselves behind this dictator wannabe Look, nobody, and a loser at the same time? Nobody should have that kind of confidence. I mean, we saw everybody thought he was going to lose in 2016. It is a mistake yeah. to right. think he cannot win. Right. But let me just put it this way. Uh, you have to wonder whether Republicans will ever get, to coin a phrase, tired of, of, of winning, mm -hmm. tired of Trump winning. Because since he won in 2016, they have managed to lose over and over and yeah. over again. He has dominated primaries like he is doing now mm -hmm. over and over again. But when he got to a general election, the Trump ties killed them. I'll give you one last example. Okay. The state of Georgia, yeah. six different Senate races. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He lost all six of them. His yeah. candidates lost. He turned lost. Georgia blue. Yeah. 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 So. Well, you know, listen, sometimes people say this is what they're going to do. And it's 100, what did you say, 179,000 people? 110,000. 110,000 people. So that's. About, about 55 who voted for, uh, for Trump. OK, so, you know, this seems par for the course. Mm -hmm. You know, it's early days. And none of us are going to know what happens until we know what happened. Yes. So yes. don't get suckered. You know, God bless don't you. Don't get complacent. <laughs> so, you know, don't, don't get suckered. This is, this is yours. This belongs to the United States of America, all the people sitting here and at home. This is your election. We can't tell you who to vote for. We're just telling you what we're seeing. Keep that in mind. And John Carr, exactly. you know, yes. I'm all, we are always glad when you're here, because somehow you just leave us feeling better. Yes. <laughs> and you know, his book, Tired of Winning, is available right now.